The NASCAR Pinty Series powers into the Autodrome Seda Stash. This flat 4 tenths mile oval will play a pivotal role in a tight points championship. Canada's Premier Series is ready to race north of Montreal. This is the Lucas Oil 250, presented by Bumper to Bumper at Coors Light on TSN. Hello and welcome to Autodrome St. Estache for the 12th race of the NASCAR Pinty Series season. I'm Dave Bradley along with Adam Ross and Todd Lewis's trackside. Adam, this is a facility like no other. Run by the LeBras family, this is a complete motorsports venue. They've got the road course, the drift track, the drag strip, and tonight we are going to see a race on this 4 tenths mile oval that is like no other. Well, it's flat, and that is one of the cool things of this Pinty series is that no one track is the same. Every week is a new book, and this man right here has written a textbook on how to succeed in 2017. Out of 11 races, Alex LeBay has won four. He has six top five finishes. Kevin Lacroix is second. Lapsovich and Kennington as well can still get there. So can Dumoulin, but they need to have really solid nights tonight, Dave. The one driver who is looking to take over top spot, Kevin Kevin Lacroix calls St. Eustache home. He did what he had to do today. He was in the top two in practice earlier on today. Then in qualifying, the 28-year-old went out and took fast time to collect the E3 spark plug pull award. Don Thompson Jr. and that bumper-to-bumper -bumper crew had the car working just right in qualifying. And here's Manel Cawthorn with tonight's command. to life on the front straightaway. It is going to be a dice. The temperatures are dropping here in St. Estache, Quebec. The cars were super fast in practice, though. Well, Alex LeBay and Kevin Lacroix on the front row. Those are the two drivers with the rivalry. I was talking to Mark Dilley earlier on in the 0-2. This is his 26th year racing at St. Eustache. Now let's go to the clean flow starting grid to find out where your favorite driver is starting here tonight. We know the front row. Kevin Lacroix and pull Alex LeBay to the outside of row number one. Looking back to row number two, that's where we find Anthony Simone in the number 95 and Donald Teach in the 22. There's a story behind the 22 as well. In the third row, there's Mark Dilley. We talked about alongside the 17 of DJ Kennington. And row number four, Louis-Philippe Dumoulin in the 47 and the 27 of Andrew Ranger. Looking back to row number five, we have Alex Tagliani in the number 18, J.F. Dumoulin in the 0-4. He's looking for a big race here today. This uh, row number six has the 76 of Caden Lapsovich, a little bit further back than he expected, and the number nine of Adam Martin. Row seven, Simone Dion Vienne in the 25, and Charles Harvey in the Haviland 09. And then to row eight, Brandon White in the 99, and Joey McComb in the eight. Look at the crowd here in St. Estache, Quebec. Alan LeBras told me that we're close to a sellout. Very, very close. And this huge crowd with a cell phone salute to the drivers. Take a look at the E3 Spark Plugs race analysis. They will be making pit stops here today. It's going to be a busy pit lane. The pit stalls are super tight. Keaton Lapsovich won this race last year on a bold strategy. Let's go down and check with Todd. Todd, a couple of notes about our young competitors in the field tonight, guys. Keaton Lapsovich. The 2016 champion has received another honor. He's the Rising Star Award winner and will be inducted at the Canadian Motorsport Hall of Fame ceremonies in October. They're also sporting a new sponsor on that car this weekend. And the number nine of Adam Martin has locked up the Jostens Rookie of the Year Award, even with a couple of races remaining. Talked to Adam earlier today. He said it's great, but they are focused on learning a lot and improving their finishes in the final couple of events this year. Positive news for the NASCAR Pinty Series moving forward. And Dave, things might not be as good for Adam Martin as he would like. Something doesn't sound right in the power plant of that nine machine. Should mention, too, on the 76 of Lapsovich, picking up a sponsor, Auto Credit National, Marty and Melina Robichaux coming on board for this weekend. Great news for that team. They've brought a lot of fans to the racetrack, having a great time so far. Let's see if their driver can charge to the front. This is where the adrenaline starts to ramp up. Looking for the green flag as they come on to the front shoot. It's up as Nicole Samar gives it a wave, and we're underway here at St. Estache. You can see how important that green flag was. Kevin Lacroix all sorts of sideways. We mentioned. 
section this track is super, super flat, especially in the turns. That makes it pretty much a one groove racetrack for these NASCAR PT Series cars, unless you get a little bit loose or start making a mistake. Right here is where you can start to build an opportunity to pass. From the center of the corner off, in the opening laps, these cars will all be running fairly well. They are jockeying hard for position. DJ Kennington took advantage there, dove to the inside of Donald Teach in the 22 as they battle for the fifth position. But right there, Dave, from the center off, as a car starts to lose its handling, it's going to drift up off the bottom of the racetrack. That's where someone like Ranger right here can pounce on the car in front of him. Oh, contact as Teach came back down the racetrack. Wow, it looks like they slammed the door down into turn three. Get back into single file. Now, I mentioned there was a story behind the 22 of Donald Teach. He actually broke his left foot at our last oval race at Riverside after a jack fell on it. But he said, it's OK. It's only my break foot. We don't have to worry. You're going to use that left foot an <laughs> awful lot here tonight at this racetrack as Mark Dilley applies the pressure to Anthony Simone. This has been a great track historically for the driver, the Avenue Auto Parts, Leland 02. I'm Mark Dilley. Inspect your tire. Tire. Inspect your tire. Clear. Do you know, Dave, of all the active drivers in this race, who do you think has led the most laps at this racetrack? I'm going to throw it out there, DJ Cannington. That's what I would have thought. It's Andrew Ranger in the 27, not, not who we would think of as a dominant oval racer. Scott Steckley has the most laps led. He is not behind the wheel tonight. But Andrew Ranger, of all the cars here in attendance, is the one who's led the most. Trying to listen to the engine on the Lowe's EpiPen 18 of Alex Tagliani. I thought I might have heard a little bit of a miss. He struggled mightily in practice earlier on today and didn't get the qualifying run that he wanted either. But he seems to be settling in here for race. It is a long one, 250 laps. That car's been an animal for Tagliani all day long. How'd you like that onboard camera, the right on the front bumper <laughs> of the 18 car? Well, the 17 Castro Lynch Dodge of DJ Kennington moving up into fourth spot now as he dives underneath the 0-2 of Mark Dilley. And Kennington, another driver after practice, he said, you know what, guys, I'm just going to pull it in because we need to do some work. They did go to work, changed everything but the paint color on that Castro Edge Dodge, and it worked very well for them in qualifying. One thing I mentioned as we rode on board there with Donald Teach, you make your passes coming off the corner on the inside. The better way to make your pass, Dave, is when the car in front of you carves a hole, gets to the inside of someone, you follow them through. You're going to see drivers make really aggressive moves to not let someone back in line. The leader in the early going, the 74 of Kevin Lacroix. Everyone is playing catch up after 12 laps. The Lucas Oil 250 from Autodrome St. Estache is brought to you by Mopar. We built it. We know it. By Pinty's, making great food fun. And by Silver Wax, a premium Canadian car care product. So it's still really the two drivers in the thick of the championship battle here in the NASCAR Pinty Series. The 74 of Kevin Lacroix out in front, but the 32 of Alex LeMay is keeping him honest. He is right here. Look at the driver on the charge, DJ Kennington, that Castro Edge number 17. He's on a string of solid runs on oval tracks as he takes over the third spot. Donald Teach is following him up through this pack. The 95 of Anthony Simone has been pretty quick all weekend long here today. So look for big things out of that driver after a great run at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park in his first top five of the season. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, that didn't sound so good. I, I'm not even sure what that sound is, Dave, except that's an ill-handling motor. Yeah. <laughs> I shouldn't say an ill-handling motor, an ill-running motor. That sounds horrible. <laughs> well, you heard Jeff Gutler there, the spotter for DJ Kennington once again this weekend as Donald Teach made the move in the circuit. Acura, number 22, he moves up to third spot now. And you could hear the onboard of DJ Kennington. That's what an engine is supposed to sound like, that rumble. Some of them will have a little bit different tone, but they all sound good. 
Except for the night. <laughs> Look at the battle at the front. The 74 bumper to bumper total. Dodge Challenger of Kevin Lacroix is now getting some heat from the Ford Fusion KM sponsored. 32 of Alex LeBay. Alex LeBay with a lot of experience. Even though this is Kevin Lacroix's hometown, Alex LeBay has a lot more laps around this racetrack than does Kevin Lacroix. Look how close they come to the end of that wall when they come out of turn four. I was just going to point that out. You really have to pay attention on exit on turn number four because that's the fastest line. You need to put your left front fender just inches from that wall. Watch as they do it again. See LeBay right down through the white paint. Lacroix is kind of respecting that and staying above it. LeBay is carving right through as Anthony Simone works up to the outside of Charles Harvey in the 0-9. Mark Dilly thought about making a move. Three wide here at St. Estacio is quite a challenge. The 95 of Anthony Simone in fifth spot. Harvey is down in 16th place. He's now the first car to go a lap down. And now Lacroix has opened up a gap again. Alex LeBay. LeBay was closing the gap. Lacroix has opened some distance now. About eight car lengths between himself and the 32. Now remember, both these drivers have four wins on the season. Lacroix has won on all road courses, and LeBay has won on oval tracks. As you can see, the top two have now stretched open a gap to third place, the 22 of Donald Teach. Simone de Vienne and that Castrol 25 went to close the door on Donald Teach. When you were a lap car, you don't get the respect a lead lap car gets. Teach gave him the bumper and got him out of the way. Mark Dilly making a move underneath the 95 of Anthony Simone, picking up fifth spot. How about the 76 of Caden Lapsovich? Brand new sponsor on board, and he's working his way up through the field. He is so right now. Andrew Ranger looks to the inside because Caden had looked to the outside of Anthony Simone. We're going to see that tonight. The move they make down into turn one, Dave, they actually drive down onto the pit exit, just to the left, right there. It changes elevation. When you get down there, you go up the racetrack, and we see Caden moving his arms left and right, trying to regain control of the car. When you come back down off the elevation, you don't know where the car is going to go. Started all the way back in 11th position. Now he's up to 7th. And you hear that scanner chatter. The spotters talking to each other as Ranger tries to make a move underneath the 95. He caught that inside curving. And you'll see that frequently here, too, as the driver tries to pinch just a little bit more and bounces into the car on the outside. And the driver on the inside is trying to give plenty of room to the car on the outside. And the car on the outside is trying to run as low as they can because that's where the grip is. There's just a lot of contact on a track like this, Dave. Now, the NASCAR Pinty Series is unique. We have drivers from Cup, Xfinity, Trucks, but there is talk that Alex LeBay may go full-time in the Xfinity Series next year with Go Fast Racing, who runs that team, plus a Cup team as well. I, I think if that's the case, and Alex LeBay is a deserving young man, we need to start lobbying for the next young Canadian racer to get their opportunity to drive in the Go Fast team in the Pinty series, and it'd be great to see them remain in this series while sending LeBay down south to chase his dream. L.A. Munir, the owner on that car, and you're right, it's great equipment, and LeBay, a very, very smart driver, and deserve it on that next step forward in his NASCAR career. Joey McComb in the eight machine gets down to the inside of the racetrack. Kevin Lacroix, he's really learning his oval track craft. Don't make any rash moves. Stay as close to the racing line as you can until you can put your fender alongside the lap car. There's no reason to give a driver like Alex LeBay any opening until it's absolutely necessary when you're going around slower cars. The Spectre Premium 04 off JF Dumoulin, now underneath the 95 of Anthony Simone. That's ninth spot. Dumoulin has been picking up a lot of ground, and he has a lot of fans in the grandstands here today. Spectra Premium brought out a lot of supporters. I'm just enjoying the heck out of that front bumper camera. <laughs> I'm taking any cost. I thought we might be seeing the end. That's actually why I didn't say anything. <laughs> but this could be. Oh, oh my goes. goodness! Simone goes around in turn number four. Adam Martin takes the base of action. Nobody hits him, surprisingly, as the caution flies for the first time in the Lucas Oil 250. I'll bet Adam Martin was going three times the pit road speed limit just then down pit lane. On board with Alex Tagliani. It's going to happen exiting this corner. Have a look. 
Whoops. That one wasn't a lot of contact, oh, but it did look like there was contact there. Simone spins, and we're busy on pit road. The leaders are in, and Todd standing by. Todd? Everyone making stops at this point for fuel. They will put Sunoco fuel into the 74, also making a handling adjustment. Same thing on the 32 of Alex LeBay. Full of fuel handling adjustment. The 74 wins the race off pit road. And there you saw an example of just how tight it is. You saw Caden Lapsovich pull in. The crew going to work on the 18 of Alex Tagliani. Looks like a spring rubber on the right rear. But we have a brand new leader. The 22 of Donald Teach out front under caution. Getting set for restart number one here at Autodrome St. Estache as Donald Teach leads the Lucas Oil 250 presented by Bumper to Bumper and Coors Light. The field doubled up. We're about to work lap 62 and these two drivers did not fit. Donald Teach and Mark Dilly in the 0-2. They came together coming to the green but we carry on. You can see Lacroix LeBay sitting there in row two. You see him immediately start to fall back with those worn tires. Well, he's on the outside, which is already not the place to be. Lacroix and, and Alex LeBay were the class of the field, so they got to the bottom. I think if I'm Mark Dilley, I'm pretty content that I'm still in fourth. That's true. I should say they all have worn tires. Nobody stopped to pick up brand new Goodyear Eagles. Fuel only in a spring rubber out of the back of the 18. Anthony Simone, who was falling back earlier, now working the outside of J.F. Dumoulin in the 04. That's Brandon White in the good leaf recycling 99. He had a lot of struggles in practice, but Dave, that car's up to speed. There's the auto credit national 76 of Caden Lapsovich. Under some heat now from the 17 of DJ Kennington. That's a nice for fifth spot. It's nice to see that 76 car with some, some words on the quarter <laughs> panel. It's been blank for way too long. So Kevin Lacroix kind of diamonding that corner. He goes in a little bit higher to come back down the bottom, hoping that Teach will slip off the bottom groove of the racetrack. Here they go through three and four. Now Lacroix's running the bottom. That's where LeBay was running when he was shot. Oh, oh, the 99 of Brandon White around in turn four. He lights up the rear tires and a couple other cars pile in. It looks like Joey McComb in the eight. It looks like Charles Harvey as well. Wow, significant damage to Joey McComb's machine. Brandon White, looks like he'll be able to drive away. Yeah, the OCR gas bar, number 99 of Brandon White, did not make significant contact with the wall. You can see he tried to save it from a spin, and then the eight car piled in, and then the zero nine piled in, and there's where we sit. So let's have a look, okay, from our speed shot. There's Brandon White going around Days of Thunder smoke show. And we don't really see the contact between McComb and Charles Harvey. There goes Joey McComb. That's a no-no. You're not to walk across the racetrack in these wrecks. They want you to stay with the car until the safety crew gets there, Dave. Looking obviously very dejected out of the eight car, but he is okay. And that's the good news is a CBRT driver will head back to the paddock area. Charles Harvey also out. We'll be back. Donald Teach is your leader. Welcome back to NASCAR Racing on TSN. Donald Teach leads the Lucas Oil 250 with Kevin Lacroix joining him on the front row as we get set for restart number two here on lap 77. This is a tall order for Kevin Lacroix on the outside. Donald Teach down low. Here they come to the green flag. We get to see just how good that number 74 is. You remember how many laps he led in the early going of this race in the bumper to bumper 74. There was a lot of fluid on the racetrack in turn four. As a result, they put down a lot of oil dry. So you're gonna see as they come through three and four, there's gonna be a big cloud of white. Not too bad, but definitely fill in the air. Well, that makes it even harder when you're up on the outside because all of that dust gets pushed out there. Side by side, Alex LeBay battling for second. He wasn't able to pass the 74 of Lacroix when Lacroix was out in front. Takes advantage of Kevin being stuck on the outside. Now Alex LeBay to second spot. How about the Leland 02 of Mark Dilley hanging it on the outside and actually making it work pretty decently? I can't get enough of this camera. That's the 18 of Alex Tagliani sitting in ninth position. 
There he is chasing the WeatherTech Dacia number 47 of LP Dumoulin. Caden Lapsovich on the outside of LP. Side by side, they've been for about a lap and a half now. Battle for seventh spot. You see all of the lead pack now single file as everybody has settled back in. Yeah, the top six nose to tail. Donald Tej out in front. Wow, LeVay drove it deep down into turn three. Whoa, did he ever, and he slammed the nose down as he got hard on the brakes, and he'll make it stick. Picking up the lead is the 32 of Alex LeVay. Important for bonus points. It is important, and equally as important, get the nose of your car into the hole if you're Kevin Lacroix, and he did. DJ Kenning can get to try to do it as well. Not sure if he's going to make it. Tej Wiley. Oval track racer, a veteran of the late model ranks in uh, Quebec, and he looks to close the door. He knows better than to leave that bottom groove open here at St. Estache. Does a nice job to get down into the third position ahead of DJ Kennington, but everybody's chasing the 32 of Alex LeBay. Right now, about two car lengths between himself and Kevin Lacroix in the 74. And Lacroix's not pulling away from the 22 of Teach. Well, that's pretty interesting, too. They're all single file. They're all running pretty similar lap times at this point. So no one driver head and tails above anybody else. Kaden Lapsovich has not had a good restart. He slid back in that 76. Clear behind him. Warren Jones on the scanner. Talking to Alex Tagliani. And that's important information. It's clear behind the 76. So if you let him by, turn hard left down to the bottom, and then we'll regroup from there. Caden Lapsovich picking up eight spot, but here comes the Spectra Premium 04 of JF Dumoulin. Looks like a body brace hanging from the back end of the 04. And Dumoulin just made a move like I talked about. He drove right down the pit exit on the inside of one and two, up the elevation. And it splits them up into the 18, and they make contact. They did Buffer, make contact. Fire, fire, buffer, clear. Tagliani did a whale of a job to hang on to it up on the outside, but Dumoulin's not done. He's going to come back at him. That's a great battle, and so is this, the race for second. Kevin Lacroix still just a couple of car lengths back from LeBay, but he's, he's got to be focused on his rear view mirror because Donald Teach is all over the racetrack looking for race room now, a little bump. He's getting racy, and this is something we didn't see through the first 50 laps or so. Kevin Lacroix was well out in front, but Teach gives him a little how you doing. Did you hear that? Four. When he bumped him, you could hear just a tiny bit of tire squeal. That's got to be where Teach is drawing his energy. He's getting an angry picture of Donald <laughs> Duck on the dash right in front of the driver. But you could actually hear the traction break on the 74 from the in-car camera. Scott, Randy, Stackley likely trying to get their driver riled up here in the NASCAR Pinty Series as Donald Teach searches for his first ever victory. on the inside of Andrew Ranger. That car slid way out from under him. Yeah, but Adam, it's not a surprise to see the Mopar Dodge to 27 of Ranger up on the outside. That's where he's comfortable on these ovals. It's where he's comfortable, except when Caden Lapsovich made that move. I don't think Ranger liked that very much. He gave Lapsovich a poke. And it looks like troubles continue for the number nine of Adam Martin. Todd? Yeah, this is becoming a tough one for our Rookie of the Year, Adam Martin, guys. There is a problem somewhere in the differential and in the rear end. They've got him in the, up on the jack stands. They're trying to diagnose what it is, but Adam Martin is going laps down. Remember, we were on board, and we heard that noise, and I couldn't really identify it. It sounded like a hockey cart in the spokes of your bicycle. That's kind of what the rear end is. I mean, that's the <laughs> gearing in the back. Something there that's not supposed to be there, and Adam Martin is up on jack stands. Well, they'll try and get him fixed up to save as many points as they possibly can with just one race after this one remaining in the 2017 season for the NASCAR Pinty Series. The number 32 of Alex LeVay in control here in St. Estache. We've hit the halfway mark at Autodrome St. Estache. 24 year old Alex LeBay from Victoriaville, Quebec, driving for Alain Meunier. And Go Fast Racing out of the Dave Jacobs shop leads the Lucas Oil 250. Inside there. You're clear. Coming back on the inside. At your store. Just let him go. We'll get by him again. Let him go. This has been an ongoing battle, lap after lap after lap. And Alex Tagliani, I think, has too much.
much pride to let it go like this. I don't know if that was Warren or if that was Tyler Case. That was Warren Jones telling him, let him go, get behind him, because all you're going to do racing side by side is use up brakes and use up tires. Well, that huge contingent from Spectra Premium is sitting in the turn one grandstand, and they just erupted, so they like seeing that 0-4 get around the 18. Another battle that's been ongoing is Kate Lapsovich in the 76, trying to get around the 47 of LP Dumoulin, not having a lot of success. And Dave, we're past the halfway point of this race. These drivers are going to be screaming for tires right about now. A couple of them still haven't come in for fuel. And Todd's been walking up and down pit road trying to find out the story. Todd, what's up? Yeah, guys, we're getting to an interesting point in the race where teams may make stops, and that might be it for the rest of the night. The 22, the 0-2 haven't stopped at all. They may be making double stops to take their tires. We've had a long green flag run. We may have more before these 250 laps are wrapped up. And Dave, what will happen if yellow comes out? We know these race leaders, the 74, the 32, they'll come in, they'll take their tires. They'll take two tires, they'll go back on the track, they'll come in again, take the other side tires, but they don't have to take on fuel again. The 02 and the 22, they've got to make three stops, one for fuel, two for tires. They're going to be at the end of the lead lap cars if they can hang in on the lead lap. The pace that Alex LeBay is setting is crazy. And we've been running for almost 55 laps under green since the last caution, which is an extended green flag period. Look at the line. Mark Tilly's running way up to the outside where LP Dumoulin and Caden on the bottom, where Caden's really been making up ground is right here, right between three and four. Wow, right up on the back bumper of Dumoulin. See a lot of these cars now starting to move around. They're starting to get a little bit loose, especially under acceleration. Mark Dilly trying to keep that momentum up way up on the outside. Such a flat corner, though. Not much banking to use. He's still holding down fifth spot, though. I thought that might have been the opportunity Caden would have needed when Dumoulin and got mixed up on the on the curbing on the inside, but no, he's going to make that pass on Dilly. Almost three wide. I thought Caden Lapsovich was going to dive down onto the exit of pit lane to go underneath the 47, but both Dumoulin and Lapsovich make their way around the Leland 0-2 of Mark Dilly. Listen to how slowly they get on the throttle here. Remember, we were at Riverside. You hear the RPMs wind right up because they jump on the gas. Here, you got to pretend there's an egg under the gas pedal. You've really got to gently push it down. And more rough stuff from the 22 on the 74. Is Donald Teague getting impatient, sitting in third spot, chasing Kevin Lacroix, looking for a way by. But Lacroix doing what he needs to do to hold the 22 at bay. That's still pretty gentle stock car racing. You can see the front bumper. Okay, that's a pretty good <laughs> lick. That's not gentle. I was going to say. That'll you can, do it, too. Think, right. You can see the front bumper of Teach in the 22 still fully intact. There's no red paint on it. There's probably a little bit of red paint now after gouging Kevin Lacroix there to make the move. Well, he'd been following him for a number of laps and giving him sort of warning nudges. Uh, Kevin Lacroix had to know the big one was coming. To give you an idea of the talent level of Kevin Lacroix, track promoter Alan Labrosse says Kevin Lacroix is the closest thing he's seen in driving style to Gilles Villeneuve that he's ever seen. Doesn't surprise me if you saw his hands moving the last time we were on the onboard. He is on the ragged edge. That's a big battle. That's the race leader. We heard Steven Simmons tell him the race leader right behind you as Caden Lazarus gets to the inside. Simone way up the outside. Three wide out of turn four. Oh, and we're going to make it work, too. Simone off the pace on the outside in turn number four. Lapsovich gets around the 47 of Dumoulin in the WeatherTech Dodge. So the Audit Credit National 76 of Lapsovich picks up yet another spot back into the top five. So to go back to that battle between J.F. Dumoulin and the 0-4 and the 27 of Andrew Ranger, for one, they want to stay on the lead lap. For two, if they do get lapped, they want to make sure they're the closest car to Alex LeBay to get the free pass when a yellow flag comes in. Riding on board with Alex LeBay, and this is what it feels like to be in your own time zone. Man, he just drives it down into the center. Listen to this. Oh, little wiggle. 
So even Alex LeMay is not invincible. And LeMay is picking him off one by one. Now under 100 laps to go here at Autodrome St. Eustache in the Lucas Oil 250 here on TSN. Back in the spring, Dave Jacobs and Randy Smith took one of their older oval cars, refurbished it, updated it, and tested it in July. Alex LeBay won four races in car number one. The team was so confident that they brought an unraced car deep in a championship hunt to St. Eustache, and that car has led for 71 laps here tonight. I don't want to bring up old news, Dave, but that post-race incident with Kevin Lacroix put the four-race winning car basically on the shelf for the rest of the year. Let's go through the field now. We'll go back to second place, and that's the number 22 of Donald Teach. Started in fourth spot. As we mentioned, a broken left foot. Doesn't seem to be bothering him tonight. Not one bit. He got around the 74 of Lacroix, and he started to pull away. He's not closing the gap too much on Alex LeBay, but he is leaving Kevin Lacroix behind. And that bumper-to-bumper -bumper 74, that's who continues to run in the third position. And second in points coming into this race from St. Estache, Quebec. Racing in front of a hometown crowd started on the pole, led in the early going, but has since dropped back and hasn't been quite as quick since the last caution. That's your top three. Let's look back to the fourth place car. It's not Alex Tagliani, it's the 17 of DJ Kennington, that Castro Edge Dodge who has more laps at St. Eustache than anybody. He used to race Delaware Speedway in London on Friday night and then towed to St. Eustache to race Saturday night in the Cascar Sportsman. Not really a surprise to see that driver solidly inside the top five. Hanging on to the fifth spot he is the number 76 of Caden Lapsovich, and he is wheeling it in the Auto Credit National Sponsor Dodge, picking up a sponsor for this race, and he is putting on a show, starting deep in the field in 11th spot, and now, as we mentioned, in fifth. You know, the championship team parks in the same spot every week. They have the first parking spot in the garage area. It was almost strange as we look at the WeatherTech 47 of LP Dumoulin running in the sixth position, the last car on the lead lap. It was almost strange, though, going by the Lapsovich team, and there was a big entourage there, and there was lots of guests and a name on the side of the car. We're used to seeing just a few crew members in the Lapsovich family. Well, that's our run through the field. As you see, the leader has caught up to the back of your sixth place driver. Adam, as you mentioned, the last car on the lead lap. Just so smooth. That Alex LeBay is making up his time because he's smooth under brake, and he gets the car to transition so well. Get into the corner, get off the corner. This is an interesting dynamic. LP Dumoulin is faster than Brandon White. Alex LeBay is faster than both of them. He's really going to have to show some patience. He might go to the middle. But LeBay can afford to be patient as the car owner, Alan Lanier, watches on as the driver takes control of this race and slowly the 2017 championship. We'll be back to St. Estache. Welcome back. There are just four cars on the lead lap and 65 laps to go here at St. Eustache. Alex LeBay has been dominant as he continues to pace the field. But fuel must be on the mind of the 0-2 and the 22 teams who did not stop on lap 60. Todd, what are they saying in the pits? Hi right, guys, we're just checking on the fuel situation with the 22 and the 02. Talk to Randy Steckley, who's the crew chief for Donald Teach, and I said, how far can you guys go on fuel? And he just smiled at me and said, all the way. Then he grinned a little bigger and then crossed his fingers. They think they can make it, but it'll be close. Uh, Randy will always smile at you too when he's telling you stories. Mark Dilley is another one who has to be concerned because without caution laps, these cars are pretty much flat out, so the drivers will have to do some fuel saving on their own. Yeah, they are at maximum fuel consumption. I, I don't say maximum in a good way. They are burning a lot of Sunoco fuel here with all these green flag laps as we ride on board with angry Donald, Donald Teach. <laughs> And of course, the final race of the 2017 series will be at Jucasa Motor Speedway, a completely revamped track. Let me say it. Let me say okay, it. Okay, you can say it. The Pinty's Fall Brawl. Under the lights, brand new lighting system at that track, brand new facility, really, and it's going to be a great show. September 23rd is the race date for that one. Tickets still available if you want to come join us. If you miss it, don't forget, we'll bring you all of the action right here on TSN.
Kenny Hill and Jerry Montour have built a beautiful facility. Alex Nagy's doing a great job at running it. And it's my favorite name yet. 11 years, the fall brawl, that's awesome. And we will crown a champion in the NASCAR Pinty Series following that race. And the 32 of Alex LeBay is making a bid to be that champion here in 2017. And speaking of champions, there's last year's titleist, Caden Lovsovich, fourth place right now. And I don't think he has the car to hold off Alex LeBay. Well, it's interesting. That's two UNOH students, both taking high-performance technology degrees. LeBay's in his second year. Caden just starting. Lots of go-karting nights between those two in the future. He can guarantee it. I don't doubt it. And, of course, UNOH, the University of Northern Ohio, big motorsports program down there. Matter of fact, the University of Northern Ohio sponsors some race cars, be it on dirt, asphalt, whatever. Uh, big supporters of NASCAR. So Alex LeBay gets around Lapsovich. We look back at J.F. Dumoulin in the 0-4, looking to make a move on seventh place. Mark Dilley in the 0-2, and remember, keep an eye on the 0-2 and, and listen, see if you can hear that car start to sputter at all. Fuel is an issue. And the fuel load on the 0-2 as well. There's no weight in the rear end of that Ford Fusion. So the back end is getting a little tail happy for Mark Dilley as the 0-4 of JF Dumoulin moves up into seventh spot. What a great run for him today. You know, I, the one thing I noticed with JF Dumoulin, he's such a smooth race car driver, is Mark Dilley just about took that car into the garage area. <laughs> Donald Teach goes to the inside. J.F. Dumoulin on a short run on an oval still doesn't quite have what the great oval racers have, but give it a long run where you've really got to finesse the car and start to work the brake pedal, work the throttle pedal, and dance a little bit. He is as good on the track as anybody. Trouble for Brandon White in the 99. The Good Leafs recycling Chevrolet will find pit lane and find his pit stall. Not a lot of activity coming out of his crew, so it looks like his evening is done. You can always tell how serious the problem is by how quickly the crew goes over the wall. And here we go. Third place, Kevin Lacroix, our pole center tonight, about to go a lap down if Alex LeBay can make the pass. And remember, Kevin Lacroix needed to beat the 32 of Alex LeBay by a significant margin if he had any hopes of getting back into this championship hunt here in 2017. Even after he won at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park convincingly, Kevin Lacroix says, I don't want to wish bad luck on anybody, but we can't win the championship without bad luck on the 32. So he knows it was an uphill battle, and he can't feel good about what he sees in his mirror. 34 laps remain here in the Lucas Oil 250. <laughs> Look at the 74. As loose as he is, looks like Kevin Lacroix is just hanging on in this event. This is a fairly unprecedented green flag run. We often have long runs at St. Estash, but for this length Whoa. of time, to not be able to cool, wow, contact down into three. The Lovely. last thing these drivers wanted to do, and look at Keaton Laksovich in the 76. That is now a battle for third. That's a spotter for the 32 as LeBay stuffed it into the inside of the 74. That was for a lap position. It wasn't for position on the racetrack, but the 74 now goes a lap down, and now he loses a spot to the 76 of Caden Lapsovich. Yeah, that was a battle for the third position after Alex LeBay went by to put him a lap down. And we're seeing these cars so on the edge of control. And without a yellow flag, this long green flag run, even without changing the tires, you get a chance to cool things off on a yellow. We're under green at St. Dash. 11 laps to go here at Autodrome St. Stash. Welcome back. I'm Dave Bradley along with Adam Ross in the booth. Todd Lewis is trackside in the pits. Alan LeBross, the owner here at Autodrome St. Stash, has to be happy with what he sees. A packed house here tonight and a rising Quebec star way out in front in Alex LeBay. I have a strong feeling Alex LeBay is going to be claimed by all of Canada before too long. <laughs> a rising Canadian star for sure. And this has to feel like vindication for LeBay, who really got his big break here. He was driving a Dave Jacobs car years ago, set it on the pole, broke a rear end during the race and crashed out of the race, but he really turned some heads that day, and I think it'll feel special if he can close the deal here tonight. Now about this battle for fifth spot between a pair of brothers. You have LP Dumoulin and the WeatherTech.ca 47 and the 04 of 
J.F. Dumoulin just in behind. We talked about how smooth LeBay has been. J.F. is the opposite of that right now. <laughs> if they go on board again, those both of these cars are running unorthodox lines, down through one and two especially. L.P. Dumoulin way to the inside. J.F. Dumoulin drives just about into the grass. But the things you have to do to make these cars get through a corner when it's this far into a run, Dave, you do what you have to do. And there is your leader coming through three and four. There will be six laps to go this time by the strike. He's tucked in behind the Castro Lens dodge of DJ Kennington. And there's that battle for fifth. It looks like they were exiting pit lane that time. It's almost like a game of horse on the basketball court. <laughs> okay, I'm going to do it first, then you have to do it. I'm going to drive through the infield. Look at this. So right there, they're right down at the bottom coming off of three and four. Five laps to go for Alex LeBay. LP drives it in harder. JF with a bit better run gets really loose coming off the corner as LeBay to the inside of Kennington. It's just fascinating to watch those two brothers go at it. They're going hard, but they're not making much contact. And Kato Lapsovich keeping up with Alex LeBay. They're not. Uh... And problems for the 0 2 Mark Dilly. He's out of fuel. Wow. Fuel going into the Avenue Auto Parts 0 2. Just a couple of laps from the end. We've got to watch for the 22 of Donald Teach. They're trying to get that car running once again. That's the problem with getting a car started when it's out of fuel. It's not that easy to do. The 22 of Donald Teach also didn't stop. So we'll keep an eye on him. He's sitting in second right now. Alex LeBay closing in on the battle between the Dumoulin brothers. I can't imagine he wants anything to do with this, watching the way those two cars are handling in front of him. Blue flag being shown for the Dumoulin brothers. It's a leader he's just in behind, so they'll be aware that the 32 is just back there. There is no rear grip left on the 04. Watch the back end of that race car. He, he won't have anything left. We're coming up to the white flag. One more lap to go. A third of a mile for Alex LeBay on a dominant night. Caden Latsovich closing on the 32. It doesn't mean anything. LeBay with a huge lead, Dave. LeBay will float his way through three and four for the final time. The Jubilees touch just in front of him. But Alex LeBay will cut to the checkered flag and take yet another win here in 2017. Alex LeBay is starting his celebration, but a great battle still between the two down the back straightaway, Dave. JF going to take a final shot at his brother. He won't be able to make it stick. LP Dumoulin will come home in fifth spot. Cheers and high fives among the 32 teams. Mario Gosselin, you can breathe a little easier now. You made it to the end. Well, I'll tell you what, this kid did a hell of a job tonight. Got to thank Ken Ham and Kappa for uh, making this possible. Dave Jacobs and uh, Randy and the boys at the shop preparing a good car. All these boys here week in, week out, and I told them we just need to keep our head down, keep doing what we're doing, but Alex put on a clinic tonight. The 32 will be celebrating for the fifth time this year. Huge congratulations from this 32 team. What a terrific race for Alex LaBay. Took you, took you a little while to get out in front, but once you did, you showed them how to do it tonight. Yeah, and I, I mean, I got to give all the credit to my, to my teams. That's our brand new car, the first race on it we got, and I mean, we had four wins with the other car. And we knew we had a good car, but that car is just a rocket there. It was, it was awesome. I just tried to pace myself, and I never expected that long run there, but uh, came in, and I think... Uh, it was a pretty good uh, effort for, from all the team. Terrific victory for Alex LaBay, number five on the season, and what a debut for this brand new car. A congratulatory kiss from his girlfriend, Valerie, in victory lane as we take a look at the top 10 finishers. And Kevin Lacroix coming home in fourth spot. Look at all the dodges in the top 10. A spirited battle between the Dumoulin brothers. Two Fords, the rest are dodges. Alex Tagliani, that car was a handful all night to come home 10th. Let's head back down trackside. Todd standing by with the driver of the 22. Donald Teague with a second place finish. We were a little worried about the fuel. How yeah. worried were you in the car? <laughs> I was too, you know, uh, with uh, 150 laps. I asked uh, my crew chief if I want to save guys. He said, no, not yet. But with 35 to go, he says, now you got to save fuel. So that's what we did, and uh, we got a good result. I know where, you know, um, 
We we were very patient uh, behind the 74, so that's why uh, Alex go away. But I think we got a good car to you know to follow him. But you know that's racing and that's Sanders Stash, and we're very proud with the second place. Terrific second place run for Donald Teague. Thank you. One day he'll get a win here in the NASCAR Pinty Series. Unfortunately, tonight not his night. But we'll take a look at the championship standings. 33 points now for Alex LeBay as the lead. Boy, and it'll be tough for Lapsovich and Cannington to close in. We might be looking at that race for third now. Lapsovich, Cannington, Dumoulin, that's the tightest battle. Caden Lapsovich has another podium finish here at St. Stash. Boy, that was a handful to go that long on a green flag run. It was, uh, it was tough, but it was... Uh... You know, what shows who comes prepared for these long runs and who doesn't. So, uh, you know, I think we had a good car. Uh, the Auto Credit National Dodge was really good. Um, but, you know, I can't thank Marty and Molina and Auto Credit National for coming on board for this race. Uh, it means a lot to us, help us keep going. Uh, you know, everybody else, A Services for buying us the motor last week when we blew up. Uh, Cathcart trucking, Jim Bray trailers, Clean Flow Wicks, Castro, Troy Cove Marine. Uh, Everybody, I just can't thank everybody enough. This is awesome. Be back on the podium after a couple, you know, really tough weeks is uh, really satisfying. What a great place for victory lane, too. The drivers get to celebrate with the fans as folks start to pack up. It was a packed house here at Autodrome St. Estash. The top three celebrate on the podium. Caden, the only one able to get the cork off of the champagne bottle. I think the big winner tonight might have been the LeBras family, the promoters this place and the fans are going home after witnessing a great race too the lucas oil 250 has been brought to you by e3 spark plugs born to burn and by honey goo from clean flow on honey of Alou. the fifth win of the year for the kappa can-am team they'll try to go for six at the pinty's ball brawl big thanks to steve ryan for directing joel robinson for producing this has been a nascar on tsn presentation this copyrighted telecast may not be reproduced, retransmitted, or used in any form without the authorized written consent of NASCAR Broadcasting. NASCAR would like to thank all of our fans for your support, and we hope you enjoy today's broadcast.